Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Alan and thanks for joining me on this video. What I'm going to discuss as part of the content on this uh, this video is really just a little bit of a tip that I've got for you in terms of basing 6mm figures, or any figures indeed, um, that require a stat line or something similar to that to be added to the base. Sometimes people use dice with, you know, a little dice tray there that they can turn the the, the die over on. Um, other people do different things like stick card up or whatever. I've seen plastic bases that you tuck underneath it. But the way I like to deal with it is perhaps a little bit different, and I want to give you a little show of that on this video. This is these are figures that six mil figures that I've painted with the Sam Mustafer Blucher rules in mind, and those require you to track the status or the health or the elan of the troops as they participate in the battle. So it, it covers a little bit of their attributes as well in terms of the types of troops that they are, the characteristics they, they have. Here, you know, just for convenience really, I'm showing you some artillery, a unit of uh, infantry that has a combined artillery stat. So I've modeled mine with a little spare base there. And then these guys at the end, which are some cuirassiers or heavy cavalry from the French Napoleonic period. What I've done for these guys is to obviously mark out the base and leave approximately eight millimeters at the back of the base spare for the stat line and then i've gone to microsoft publisher and um use the uh the noise here and i've actually marked out using microsoft publisher the exact size that i need for the base so sorry if that's a bit shiny the reason i've used publisher in fact i've got a slightly better version here which is less glossy I think, um is that it will allow you to create boxes effectively of exactly the right size. So as you can see from the sheet in front of you, what I've modeled here is, is obviously green for Russians, blue for French. And this is, as I say, the Battle of Polotusk in 1812. And we've got the Bavarian uh, 6th Corps uh, fighting alongside the French 2nd Corps uh, against a, a, a French, uh, sorry, a Russian army of approximately the same sort of size. So what do we do? Well, let's move a couple of these guys out of the way and let's do the curasseurs. Um, what I've done is to cut the stat line out. I've also cut a piece of plain white paper. Now the stat line, I've tried and print that on a more durable, heavier grammage piece of paper. And that's just really to give you a bit of a fighting chance at uh, making this a nice, clear print and also having a little bit more of a durable end result. So what am I doing? Well, I'm going to get a piece of ferro sheet, or um, I suppose the old-fashioned equivalent would be steel paper. And I say old-fashioned, I prefer that because it's much easier to work with. But nowadays, you can't seem to buy that. So what I've got here marked out very roughly is a sort of uh, template, if you like, that roughly matches the line of the area that I've reserved for that stat line. It's a little bit long. So what I'm going to do here, uh, sorry, not long, but it's a little bit deeper than I'd like. So let's just move that out of the way. Um, let's just offer this up. Now this is all going to be hidden. So the important bit here is not to make it too big that it goes over the, the bases. Obviously, if you've reserved the line correctly, it's a bit easier. I I think that just needs to be trimmed a little bit. So let's get my pair of scissors here. Go down here. Depends how you cut your uh, bases and such like. I tend to use a paper cutter with a heavy duty blade. What I'm trying to do really is just make sure that that fits reasonably well in there without, as I say, going over the edge. Now this ferro sheet is self-adhesive, so if we if we take the the backing off, like so, we can sort of offer that up, make sure that it's approximately in the middle. And what I'm trying to do is make sure it's it's off the edge. I don't want it hanging over the edge. I can deal with it hanging over bigger bases a little bit. And apologies, this is. A bit shiny on the camera, but there you go. 
So the idea of that, quite frankly, is it provides a magnetic surface that we're going to adhere to shortly. What I tend to do is scrape up the base just to give us a little bit of a better fit for the stat line that's going on top of it. Like so. I've also cut another piece of paper just to really sit underneath. Now the reason I do that is because we've got a dark uh, surface here and I want to give uh, a nice white undercoat to allow the colour of the stat line to show through. But also because I want to just glue this with like a very simple white glue um, but that doesn't necessarily stick so well to this sort of shiny surface here. So what I'm going to do here is drop a little bit of super glue and then pop this on top and then that way it doesn't the super glue doesn't come through and affect the stat line but it does help to provide that really solid key underneath. Um, sorry if I'm obscuring what I'm doing but you get the general gist here is I'm just putting a very thin line spreading it out on the sheet. Now just a little word of warning if you pop this piece of paper on it will stick so it's quite important to sort of fit it from one end and then move swiftly to running it along. If you don't like the end result or you get a little bit of um, overrun, you've got a, a small window of opportunity usually depending on the type of super glue that you're using to, to reseat it. But if you're really not happy with it, you just pull it off. Um, it doesn't matter if it leaves a little bit of residue behind. And we're not too precious about how good this looks because this is just as I say serving as a key to the top stat line. Now, oops, sorry if I'm blocking up the video there. Hopefully it will reseat itself. There we go. So you can see that we're just providing that base for the next stat line to sit onto. Obviously, I've got to trim this down nicely, which I'm about to do. But the goal here. As I say, is to make sure that that's nicely on the edge there, so we're not running over the top. Um, and ideally, you want to wait for that to really be dry. We don't want to be putting this on top of this one when there's a chance that that super glue can uh, bleed through. So let me just, for the purposes of being a bit speedy on this video, oops, turn this guy off a minute. So maybe I should have used my uh, paper cutter on this. But all I would say is if you if you do find that you leave a bit of an edge, but it's not as straight as you'd like, just repeat it basically. I tend to print a few copies of the, the stat lines I'm after and also tend to be a little bit cautious in terms of the way that I trim them. But ultimately, it's it's blue, so you can quite easily fill in any sort of uh, nice looking gaps or anything like that. Uh, I think this one might need to be just slightly trimmed on the edges. Give us a nice nicer finish. So let's let's look at this one. Let's offer this one up. Okay, that's kind of like the look that I'm after. Move some of these bits out of the way. So let's just get a little bit of white glue. I'm going to use a very runny basing glue here. So, oops, let's just get a little bit on my finger. Run that along. Spread it out. Hope you're not putting too much on. As I said, if this all goes horribly wrong, you, you can usually pull the whole thing off fairly easily. It's only got the self-adhesive, which certainly in the early days isn't fully stuck. And even later on, you can uh, remove without too much hassle. Or, and, and I do this occasionally, just, just run over with a new stat line. Um, okay. Okay, probably gone a bit too quick here. I should have done that a little bit 
We'll wait for the glue to dry. Um, let's just make sure we trim that up. Now, what I tend to do, um, and let's move some of that glue out of the way. What I tend to do at this point is get a little bit of blue paint just to tie, tie in the edges. So we'll do that quickly. Not sure if I've got the right paint here, but I'm just doing it to illustrate the point. So if, if you're careful with your color co coordination here, you can certainly blend this in and get a nice finish. And sorry, I wish uh, I'd taken a little bit more care about printing the stat line with some spare room at the bottom. So make sure you're doing the same thing, that you work that out carefully for yourself. I think I'll probably go back around the loop on this one. Um, but there you go. We've now got a nicely tied in base. And once that's once that's dry, you can either use it as it is, or as I prefer to do, go over it with some varnish just to give it a little bit more in terms of durability. But what are we doing with it? Well, what we've got here is a rare earth magnet. Now I know some of you can't use rare earth magnets um, if you've got medical conditions, etc. But if you, if you can't use one of these tiny little guys, don't worry about it. You can use other magnetic um, or similar materials to, to, to work in the same way. If I just drop that on there, did you notice that we've now got a marker that doesn't move? Whatever we want to do with it, we have to make a conscious effort to move this across. Lots of ways you can use it. You can either put the, the marker above the current stat line, or you can move it down and say, right, it's the stat line. Or the value to the right of this the right of the space. As I said, if you take the trouble to varnish over this, and you can do a gloss and then a and then a matte varnish, that's a very durable, neat way of marking up your units. Um, it's got everything that I need on it in terms of the values within the rules, and it's just a really convenient way of sticking that with the figures, um, and no amount of handling is going to disrupt that. And it's just a much more convenient way than, as I say, little dice hanging about everywhere or perhaps marking up a sheet. Hopefully that's something that you're interested in. As I say, as usual, just send us a little comment if you do something similar or if you've got a better idea and I can share it with the people who watch this video. If you like what I'm about, then please click the subscribe button or at the very least, just tell me what you think of the video. Thanks very much. Take care now. Bye.